All right, welcome back. Welcome back to Blue Ridge Now. I in the Sky with Steve Bartow. I know it's been a little while since I've been here. Uh, as I told you in February, I didn't have a full-time gig with any one race team, but I have been racing quite a bit with a lot of different teams, and we'll kind of get into that. We just ran Daytona last week. I did spot for both the races, and um, we're at the halfway point. So a little recap on the season. Joe Gibbs and Penske have won all but three races this year. So that means Stuart Haas, Richard Childress Racing, Ganassi Racing haven't won any. Uh, Hendricks won Talladega with Chase Elliott, which anybody can win at Daytona Talladega, which you'll see here in just a second. And uh, Alex Bowen won at um, Chicago last week. So, or two weeks ago, excuse me. So we've had some really good racing, but it's been dominated by the Penske's and the Gibb cars. I think Chevrolet's just finally getting used to this Camaro, getting it back in order. Um, I've been doing a little bit of everything. I signed on with Richard Childress Racing to do all their extra stuff. So that includes their Xfinity car when they run different drivers from Kaz Grala, who I'm going to go with New Hampshire next weekend. Joe Graff Jr., we ran about three races. Iowa, Daytona last week. we got a couple more left. Bristol coming up. And I've done some stuff with some trucks. Uh, ben Rhodes ran second at Iowa. It's really cool to go back there in my home state, see my family, get to race there and that type of stuff. Just trying to piece things together and have fun. You know, I've been doing this for 30 years, and it's, it's kind of about fun. It's, 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 it's time both my kids have graduated college, which is good which means dad doesn't have to work quite as hard. And so I get to do some things that I wanted to do. And, and part of that I'll get into here in a little bit is IMSA racing. The guys that run the Rolex 24 hours with Team Mazda USA had some success with them over the last couple of weeks uh, and going to do some more stuff with them. So we'll kind of recap a little bit of Daytona, a little bit of what I'm doing, a little bit of the IMSA, and we'll talk a little bit more about Daytona. So first thing we're going to do is go back to last weekend and the Daytona race. I, I love plate racing. As you know, I've been very fortunate uh, to win with Kurt Busch at Daytona and win with Brad Keselowski at Talladega. Those races are fun. The spotter plays such an intricate role for the drivers. So we're going to watch what happens here, but I want you to pay close attention to Dean Hensley and I. We have a little video audio system here. There's me running a laptop, you watching a TV, but it's kind of fun to do. But I want you to pay close attention to what Jeff Burton and Dale Jr. say right away when this clip comes on. And then we're going to let it play out for a minute, and I'm going to stop it again, and we'll tell you just a little bit more. So, Dean, if you want to show the TV. So, if you heard him, he said, he said, I cannot believe he didn't block. I cannot believe he didn't block. Well, remember that. That's it. I mean, now he's giving the lead away to the 14. Weather, very close. Lightning in the air. Another thing to pay attention to. Jeff Burton just said, weather, very close. Pay attention. This could be for the win. Car's not handling. That outside line has the momentum, but Austin Dillon breaks through. Dillon. Then Bowen and Byron. Dylan's gonna win the stage. Look at this run, Austin Dylan's got. Big run by the three of Austin Dylan. He had a push from the 24. He's out front and controlling this race again. Legato. I just want to point something out here as we're going. You can see this is why the spotters are in binoculars. Three wide. You're blocking, you're spotting for the middle car. You're trying to tell him that the 11 has a run, the 17's helping the 22 inside by half to your door. You're working the whole time. The two hardest places, or actually three hardest places for a spotter is middle of the backstretch where they all blend together, off of four, and going into one. Fighting for the lead here at Daytona. Back in the 17. A big push by the 11 of Denny Hamlin, and then Denny Hamlin dives flat, trying to take the lead. He'll have the lead here at Daytona. Nine as the racing can... Okay, this is what I wanted to stop on. If you look right here, Austin Dillon took the lead with the push from the 11. We didn't really see that part. When he got up top row, the 14, who is now inside of him right here, he had momentum. He was going to dive inside. Well, what Austin Dillon decided to do was block. Unfortunately, because of the spotter's angle, 
it's really tough to tell where that 14 is. His spotter didn't probably clear him. He's a really good friend of mine, Andy Houston. He didn't clear him, but they needed a little bit of room. But again, you go back to the weathers in the area. And then that old dreaded thing that we call the big one. Continues off to Dylan on the oh, Watch what I'm saying here. 14 drops down. Austin goes to block a little bit. It's late in the race. You got to do it. These guys are close to the cutoff. These guys are close that in order to make the playoffs, they have to win. That's why Austin Dillon was going. He was going for the win. So was the 14. If they both had it to do over again, they both would have changed what they did. You don't have that option in this sport. The 11 of Denny Hamlin and then while trying to regroup. The three of Austin Dillon gets around. I'm trying to see if there's a car comes in the picture. Okay. Right here, what we're looking at is a 77. So what's happened? Let me go back here. You can see, though, us spotters, we're all up here. This is us right here at the top. Okay. It's actually very scary at this moment because lightning is coming from these clouds. NASCAR says the rule is eight miles away. My phone is going off and saying it's five miles away. They've already run, they've already run about six laps under caution, and NASCAR says we're gonna go one to go. Everybody pits except this 77 that you just saw a second ago. Right there. A small team. They only have three cars for the whole season. They only have 20 employees, and Justin Haley wins the race. So that being said. You know, it's it's just really exciting, Daytona. You never know. If you're going to be a one-time winner, it's going to be Daytona or Talladega. And it's something that even my dad, when he was racing, he stood a chance at those places. Even though it was tougher back then than it is today, now all these cars drive the same. This kid ran 27th all day long and won the race. So now we go to a place this weekend, Kentucky, mile and a half. They put down this, what they call PJ1. It's It's a grip thing. So the cars that wouldn't run at the top, they put it up there so there's more grip. So the cars will hopefully run the bottom and the top, and there's multiple grooves. And a mile and a half is where we run most of our races. Um, so that's what I've been doing. I've been racing Daytona. I've been racing the different tracks, some trucks, some Xfinity, having some fun. Finished uh, eighth in uh, Kansas with Reddick in the cup car. He, it was his second cup race ever, and we ran, uh, we ran really good there. That was a lot of fun. But the other thing I've been doing is a little bit of IMSA racing, which, like I said from before, is um, uh, the cars that run the Daytona race. So Mazda, Tim Fidoa, who spots for Kevin Harvick, asked me at Daytona in February, hey, on some of your off weekends, do you want to do some of this sports car racing? I said, yeah, absolutely, why not? So they invited me to go. I did 12 hours in Sebring. I don't know if we did a podcast after that or not. I was up on a 50 foot lift for 12 hours straight. We only came down three times and that was to grab food and use the restroom. And other than that, we were up there 12 hours. That's a little bit much for an old, old man like myself. But uh, uh, so we didn't run so good there. We had problems there, but Mazda has been in the sport for six years and we went to Watkins Glen a couple weeks ago. And I think we're going to show that right now if Dean wants to switch over. So uh, these two cars right here are the two Mazdas. And the way we do it is there's another guy named Chris Long and I, and we both spot the 55 to 77. We both, I did both the practices. We both did qualifying. We did the race and we finished one, two in the race. And I'll just show you just a quick little bit of this and um, we'll wrap it up. Next, Montoya's close to within 12 seconds, but there's two corners left. And Those purple cars right there, the two Mazdas. So this has been really cool for me. Uh, it's it's working with an international group. Um, the team is based out of Atlanta, uh, but the, the main part is out of uh, Germany. Uh, and there's also a Canadian flow, but these drivers, only one of them is from the U.S., uh, Tristan Nunez. They won back-to-back. -back. This was two weeks ago. They won again last week uh, up in Canada. 
Uh, the spotter plays a lot different role here than it does in the NASCAR. We basically help them get off and on pit road and help them with restarts more so than anything else. Where in NASCAR, you're helping them around the whole track. These guys have uh, videos in their cars of what's behind them. They're also the fastest series that runs. There's three or four different series that's running at one time. They don't need us quite as much, but they have really applauded bringing us on board, the NASCAR guys, to help them. So I've really enjoyed that. So kind of recapping everything. We'll try to do this a little bit more often. It probably won't be every week. Uh, I do go to New Hampshire next week, and then I get to help Reddick at uh, Watkins Glen in a couple weeks be a second spotter there. I was Daniel Hemrick, the eight-car cup car out in California. But, you know, keep watching NASCAR. Keep turning over to Blue Ridge now. We'll try to update you. I, I know we have a small fan base, but we like to give you some information maybe that you don't know. You know, and, and uh, when they go to uh, Kentucky this week, the trucks race tonight, just about a half hour after we stop this. Uh, Xfinity tomorrow night and Cup is on Saturday night. It's, um, it's my livelihood, and I enjoy it, and I enjoy talking about it. And I appreciate everything Dean Hensley does. Everybody here at Blue Ridge now in the Times News, uh, newspaper here in Hendersonville. Uh, if you have any questions, send them to Dean, and I'll answer them the next time we do this. But uh, appreciate everybody. Have a good night, and uh, we'll talk to you later. Thanks. Bye.